So there's no cure for Rett syndrome yet. Um, all, uh, all care is typically based on symptom presentation. It usually requires a team of physicians to care for individuals with Rett syndrome. Um, uh, a lot of, of therapies are provided. Most patients will um, be on speech therapy, occupational therapy, or physical therapy. Um, and then it's essentially palliative care to manage symptoms as they change. And it's very dynamic. Symptoms will, will ebb and flow. Um, and uh, so through that, through medications to try to manage symptoms and therapies, um, corrective surgeries are also um, common in managing Rett syndrome. But typically everything is uh, palliative at this point in time. Typically those therapies occur through school. Um, which is great, but then once individuals age out of school, those therapies become much harder to, to obtain. And so I think it's important for families to have a plan of, about how they're going to try to maintain um, those therapies after, after the individuals um, graduate through school. Um, and therapies are, are really important typically for not only gaining skills, but also maintaining them. And I know the COVID pandemic was, was pretty rough um, on a lot of families who had to discontinue a lot of their therapies and they saw, you know, changes, negative changes in their, in, in their children. There was a paper that came out recently. The lead author is Dr. Carrie Fu, and it's um, the Rett Syndrome Clinical Care Guidelines, which can help um, guide a lot of physicians that may not be as familiar with Rett Syndrome as to what types of specialists they should be recommending, what the schedule of those specialists should be. Uh, and so that, that resource is available for, um, for clinicians.